and I came across a fire helmet for $26.09. Interesting, very interesting. Oh, look at the smoke in. It's definitely heating up there. Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for watching. I've recently started two new part-time jobs. And in these jobs, I need to get outfitted. I need to have my firefighter gear. So that includes helmet, gloves, hood, jacket, pants, and boots. So it got me wondering, what does it cost for a company like that to outfit a part-timer or even a full-timer with full structural firefighting gear? Let's start with just helmets. The helmet is the icon of every firefighter. You know, that's what we put our patches on or stickers on, that's got our logo up front, all those kind of things. So I wanna find out what is the cheapest firefighter helmet that I could buy that actually is worth anything. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna come home and we're gonna do this. We're gonna get on Google. I put in firefighter helmet in Google. And what do I find? Right off the bat, there are a ton out there. But these prices are pretty high. You know, they're ranging for a Karen's helmet, $800 to $1,000. You're looking for an MSA helmet, anywhere from $285 to up to $300 dollars $400, depending on the features that you want, the style that you want. There's one for $230, there's one for $352. And as I continue to scroll through this, you know, those are the kind of the prices that I'm looking at for NFPA regulated or real firefighter helmets. So I'm like, all right, well, I like to use Amazon. Amazon has everything, right? So let's bump over to Amazon. Let's click on that. And I'm gonna search firefighter helmet. What comes up? First and foremost that comes out are all the kids toys. Of course, cause we're looking for the cheaper to more expensive. That's how I'm filtering this. So let's filter through that. MSA is on here. MSA selling it through Amazon, Amazon Prime for $316. It's your typical traditional composite helmet for 316. Still too high for me. Now I'll keep scrolling down here. I'm coming across another Karen helmet. This one's for a thousand and change. Uh, so let me keep searching here. Let's search uh, firefighter helmet for adults. Maybe we can get rid of some of those kids toys. So firefighter helmet, adult. Oh, don't do that one. <laughs> Let's skip that one. So firefighter helmet for structural. Okay, that's actually narrowed it down. Now Ballard is on here. MSA is again popping up. We still got a lot of fire gear rather than just helmets. Even though I specifically asked for helmets, a lot are popping up. Here's another Karen helmet for $1,228. Hmm, what can we do? Let's check for maybe cheapest. And I came across a fire helmet uh, for $26.09. Let's take a look. So, fire helmet, protective rescue helmet, uh, firefighter safety helmet, anti-corrosion, radiation, heat resistant, high penetrating resistance, electrical shock resistance, and flame resistance. I'm gonna take a look at these pictures here. Actually looks pretty good. It's more like the jet helmet from MSA. So it's not the traditional one here in America. So it's more of that uh, motorcycle slash kind of helmet. Uh, a lot of the UK guys use it, but it looks pretty good. For $26, it says it's real. So let's go down to the review here. It has one review and for five stars, but there's no description. It doesn't say what it's for. Let's read some of the specifications here. Specifications, it's 100% brand new. Well, that's good to know. Uh, the shell material is high temperature, resistant ABS plastic. Okay, most helmets now are coming plastic. Everybody likes their traditional leather though, but okay, we'll go with that. Uh, has a shield. It's heat resistant up to 260 degrees Celsius. So if I convert that to Fahrenheit, we're looking at 500 degrees Fahrenheit uh, that it's supposed to be resistant to. Flame resistance in the cap up to five seconds in direct flame. So we'll maybe we'll test that. And of course it's electrical insulation because it's plastic, it's not gonna be conducting electricity. So let's do this, order. And let's see what we get. I just heard the doorbell ring. Let's go check it out. I think that's our package. Sure enough, it's here. Two days later from Amazon, it's here. So let's take it downstairs to the studio and let's open it up and see what it is. 
So it's pretty crazy that this thing got here in two days. Yes, it's Amazon Prime, but they stood to their word and they got it here. It was $26.09. Before I open this up, do us a favor. Hit that subscribe, hit that notification. We're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers in just a couple of months. All right, let's get to it. So first look, you know, it's typical Amazon packaging. So uh, nice and taken care of. Let's see what's inside here. Cut thing, tape, it's taped up real nice not too damaged a lot of times when you get things from Amazon or in any shipping they get pretty damaged with boxes so open it up here oh something's on top here oh I forgot one thing that I did order was a stethoscope the cheapest stethoscope that I could find so stay tuned we're gonna do a review of stethoscopes in another episode we're gonna save this for another time all right keep looking inside here we have a bunch of packaging Get rid of that. It's not in its own box. It's kind of in its own uh, baggie. So not really the way I would package a helmet, but for $26, what do we expect? So let's cut this open, see what's inside. Fairly light too, as I pick it up. It's not a traditional heavy helmet. You know, a lot of times when I'm on the fire grounds, I end up taking my helmet off because they're so heavy. Uh, but this one is pretty light. So maybe that's a good thing. This is cool. It's in another little baggie here. So, protective shipping baggie. And this almost looks like one of those motorcycle helmet baggies. So, it's got a rip in it. Maybe I did that with my knife, but uh, it's protecting it. That's pretty good. So, can we get it out? All right, open that up. Let's pull it out here. Interesting, very interesting. I like it. I like the color of it. Um, it feels pretty sturdy. It's got a lot of features on it. <laughs> this is not what I'm used to. This is more of a aluminum foil protective guard. Uh, it looks like it snaps on here. So I'll snap it back together. One snap came off. Got some extra tissue paper for packaging. It's got a visor too. So. If we look at all the NFPA regulations, let's see if this actually meets some of those regulations. So let me put this down, I'm gonna grab my computer, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more. So now that I have my laptop out, I wanted to look up the NFPA regulations for 1971, 2018 regulations. And here's what I found so far. It says every helmet must require an outer shell, has an energy absorbing system, has to have a retention system, reflective trim, ear coverings, a face shield and or goggles or both. And the major performance requirement are applied to the helmet. So they need to test this for acceleration, impact resistant, physical penetration, heat resistant, flame resistant, electrical resistant, all the things that we talked about when we were looking it up, it seems to have met. So, you know, this is the NFPA regulations uh, 1971, updated in 2018. The only thing that I read off the list that I can see right now that it doesn't have are the reflectance. So, but let's really take a look at it and compare it to see what's going on. So I'm gonna move my laptop out of the way a little bit more, and I'm gonna bring up one of my new helmets that I just received from my uh, part-time job. This is a Honeywell helmet, and we're gonna kind of do a side-by-side -side comparison. So if we look at the helmets, this one's pretty light too. So if I pick them both up, this one's a little bit heavier, but it's pretty much uh, the same thing. So this one's got a place for where your badge can go, where this one has no place to connect your badge. So you'd probably have to put some kind of sticker or something like up there. Uh, I don't necessarily would want to drill through it because that would make it worthless uh, to have holes in it. But if we look at this one, it has the reflectives. This has the ear shield, so we're gonna flip these over. So this has got the shield. Now this one is a Nomex kind of material. This one has like a cloth material with a reflectant, I don't even know how to say it, almost like an aluminum foil. But I've seen these on the oil rig suits that they wear for those hot, you know, big oil rigs, the whole suit. So that might be something. I've never tested it. We're, we're gonna put this to the test to see what it is. So I'm gonna kind of sit up a little bit here and look into these. Uh, each of them have a shield. This one's got a shield like this. This one's got a pop-up shield. So that meets the goggle regulation and the shield regulation. So uh, that's good. Uh, chin strap. This one's got a, an actual chin strap to it where your chin goes in. This one I connected up and around. So let's disconnect that real quick. So it's definitely gonna hold your helmet on your head. Both of them easy click. 
Let's find this one. This one's actually over onto the side rather than underneath. So the material itself seems a little bit thinner than the Honeywell. What does it looks like it, it'll hold? As we look inside, we need the suspension system. So this does, it has a retractable suspension system that you can click down. So the almost boa type, uh, it's got a padding on the back for your neck, padding up front compared to the Honeywell. Oh, the Honeywell is much softer. This is actually almost like true leather uh, with a suspension system inside. This too has the boa to kind of pull it nice and tight, but the quality of materials, this is, feels more kind of plasticky, but it's soft. So we're gonna try that. Inside, it's got the netting and it's got some foam, kind of like a bike helmet. So that's definitely meeting those regulations. Does it have a sticker? I do not see a sticker on the inside. I'm gonna take out the uh, liner just to see if we can get a better look here. Okay, the suspension system is screwed in, but there are no screws on the outside of the helmet. That's cool. So you're not gonna get that electrical shock having metal on the outside of the helmet. So they definitely thought of that and it does not have an NFPA regulated sticker. So, you know, right off the bat, I'm gonna say this is not NFPA regulated, but it's meeting a lot of the same qualifications. So maybe it wasn't put through the test yet, which is what we're gonna to try to do. So if you guys know any of the NFPA regulation testing purposes, we did a real quick Google search. Uh, we looked up as much as we can. We told what it's supposed to be, but it doesn't tell us, you know, what is the heat resistance that it's supposed to have? What is the penetrating? Do I shoot it with a, you know, a 50 cal or can I just drop it off a building kind of thing? I didn't really find that, but I did a real quick search. This helmet comparable has a better suspension system on the inside. It's got some foam too, actually almost the same foam that this does, but it's just painted black. Um, this does have the sticker. So if I look at this, this clearly states that it meets all requirements of the NFPA 1971, 2018 edition. And it says, do not remove this label. And it tells you it's a Honeywell first responder at Honeywellfirst.com. So definitely a true firefighting helmet, which is why I was issued this. It has not seen fire yet, brand new. I have yet to put it in service. Uh, but before we do that, we're actually going to take a look at this one. Let's start putting this thing to the test. Maybe we can do a drop test on it uh, and put some heat on it and see what happens. So now that we're outside, we're going to do a couple of tests. First test that I want to do is a fitment test. So I'm actually going to remove the uh, liner in the back here just to make sure I got everything right. As I got it out of the box, I noticed that the adjustments on the inside needed to be uh, put back together. So I don't know during shipping it came apart or what, but I had to put these clips back together. I used the BOA. It's kind of hard to get your fingers up in here, but I opened that all the way up. I have a very big noggin, so fitting my head into this might be a little bit tight. So let's try it on and see how it goes. Uh, it's actually not too bad. It's as big as it goes. See if I can adjust it once it's on. So I cannot get my fingers up to the back side to adjust it once it's on. So I gotta take it back off. Let me tighten it down. Ah, that's better. It's actually not bad. It fits pretty good. It's got a nice chin strap. This looks kind of dorky, but it fits pretty good. It kind of keeps my chin where it belongs. Kind of fussing with it a little bit. I don't want to do that all the time. But once I get it set, this is the first time I'm putting it on. It's actually not bad. Move up, down, round around. Holds on my head pretty well. Let's bring down the visor. Ooh, that's a little different. As I look down, my lower vision down here is a little distorted. It kind of comes out away from my face a bit. So, you know, looking at my camera guy's feet, uh, it's very distorted. So if I'm working on a patient, that'd be very difficult. Looking forward's not too bad, but definitely looking down makes me a little nauseous. So let's put that back up for now. You know, one of the tests that you wanna do when you get any helmet, whether it's a $26 helmet or a $1,000 helmet, is actually put it on, see how it fits. The next test we wanna do is put it in the grill and heat it up, see how it does. Before I did that, I wanted to get my hood out and see how it fit with my hood. It actually fits pretty nice, fits better with the hood than without. So let's take it off and put it in the heat on the grill and see how it does.
We are a minute and 20 seconds in. We got it up to almost 350 degrees. I'm gonna check with another temperature gauge here, see how we're doing. It actually looks pretty good. Helmet itself is at 152 degrees. The grill is at 300 degrees. Let's keep it going. And that's three minutes in the grill. We are close to uh, 400 degrees here. Let's open this up, see how it's doing. We are smoking a little bit. You can see the smoke coming off of it. Temperature of that is 190, 195. The grill temperature is definitely 300. Let's flip it over and see how it did on the backside. Very little right at the tip of that. We are at 195 degrees. I don't see really any damage. Let's see if there's any softness to it. The grill marks actually come right off. This is unbelievable. I did not anticipate that at all. It's not soft. It's got a little bit of mark and a little bit of smoking. It definitely held up. Nothing melted. None of the buckles melted. Face shield seems to be intact. Should we put it in for another minute? Let's we'll see what it does. Now I'm going to crank it up just a little bit more. Three, two, and one. We are at 400 degrees on the grill. Oh, look at the smoking. It's definitely heating up there. Let's see what kind of damage we've done. Oh, it's, it's soft and pliable now. Yeah. I can feel that thing kind of melting on the side there. But there's no real damage. It was just soft on the corner. I can move that with my hand. At 400 degrees, it, you can feel the edges getting soft. See how that bends there? But this is radiant heat. This is not direct heat too. So we have this side of the flame going. We put it on this side on purpose because we didn't want the direct flame to start. But you can feel it kind of bowed in a little bit here. But if I kind of reapply that, that was another minute and a half in 400 degree temperature. So one thing I noticed on the inside of here, it did start to melt the straps just a little bit along the edge here. Everything else seems to be okay. It feels very soft. Still functional. Everything, the top part is still good. This part is good. You can see it kind of distorted just a little bit here. Let's see what the temperature is. It's been out for about another minute now. We're out of the direct heat. And we're looking at 140, 150 degrees still after about a minute out here in the sun uh, away from the heat. Surprisingly, it held up very well for what we're looking at. It did kind of distort just a little bit but up to 400 degrees, that's exactly what it said in the advertisements, 260 degrees Celsius or 500 degrees Fahrenheit, we were pretty close to that. So on the back side of here, as I pull off my neck guard, you can see it did get a little bit of frayed or uh, burnt here. Uh, it didn't burn it through, but it got, definitely got charred. The edge of this got distorted. Still, it's hardening up pretty good again. So let's do our next test and let's do that impact test. I'm gonna throw it off the roof. So the next test we want to do is going to be the impact test. We just finished the heat test. It did fairly well. I was definitely surprised. Uh, it did melt just a little bit, but uh, it held up pretty good. So the next test of the NFPA regulations is an impact test. I am on the second floor here, standing on the roof of my house. So we're going to toss this off and see how it does. So coming down out of the house here off the second floor, we're gonna take a look at this thing, see how it did. This thing looks pretty intact. It bounced, it took a you know pretty good fall here. As I pick it up, nothing seems to be cracked, seems to be intact. Inside looks pretty good. Little scrape on the visor, uh, but we went right on the concrete. Looks good, let's see if it fits. Everything's still good here. Yep, still fits good. Visor still works, looks good. So, once again, we found this on Amazon for $26.09. We have an affiliate link. If you're interested in taking a look at it, take a look at it, but you better do it quick because I just went on and just a couple of weeks ago, it's already gone up in price. So these are a couple of the NFPA regulation uh, tests that we could find. What are more of them? Do us a favor, comment below so we can try them out. We're gonna put this thing through every test you guys can put us to. So thanks a lot for watching. This was Heroes Next Door, and this is a product review of the cheapest fire helmet we could find.